moment in time. Dr. Wilson, I want to put back up the video of that pool party in Osage Beach, Missouri yesterday. You can see social distancing is not possible, and no one that we can see in this video is wearing a mask. The bar posted that they were going to take several precautions at this party, including operating at a reduced capacity to allow for social distancing, taking the temperature of all attendees, having bottles of hand sanitizer available for free, and placing hand sanitizer stations throughout the property. And they say they were continually cleaning and sanitizing bathrooms and that they had a paramedic on staff during the entire event. Are those precautions enough? Well, they're not enough to mitigate all the risk. We know that the highest risk things you can do is be in a large group of people indoors. But outdoors is by no means risk-free, and that risk increases with every additional person and the closer together people are. And that video certainly has a lot of people that appear to be quite close together. Now, that risk for coronavirus is different than typical risks people might face in their day-to-day -day life because we have to remember that in coronavirus, the risk isn't only to you. Any one of those people who got infected at that party is gonna spend somewhere between five and 12 days before they develop symptoms when they are able to transmit that virus to someone else. They won't know they're infected yet, and they'll be interacting potentially with their parents, with older relatives, people with comorbid conditions, people who are high risk. So we really need to remind people that when you are going to a place like that, you're assuming risk not just on yourself, but on others. Now you can mitigate that risk a little bit. Of course, we'd remind people to wash their hands, avoid touching their face, don't share drinks. But my advice to my patients and my friends is that if you want to go out, great. If you go and you find a place where there's not social distancing, where people aren't wearing masks, the best thing you can do to mitigate your own risk is to turn around and go somewhere else. So, Dr. Wilson, do you feel comfortable then with what you're seeing in some of these other locations? In Paul's live shot, for example, in Southern California, people on the beach are wearing masks. They are social distancing. Would you consider that low risk? Um, I, the, low is, 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 is very tough to say because coronavirus is a particularly infectious respiratory virus. And so it has a lot to do with where you are in the country, how, uh, how many cases there are around, et cetera. So no, nothing short of you know, locking yourself in your house is going to be zero risk. But we don't want anyone to do that. We just want the risk to be as low as possible. And so those types of behaviors, that wearing the mask, social distancing, is exactly what we need to get out of this. You know, none of us want to be stuck in quarantine anymore. The pathway out is engaging in these simple, simple behaviors that help not only us reduce the risk to ourselves, but reduce the risk to our community. I've told a lot of people, I find that act patriotic. I think that there's been a real injustice that mask wearing has been framed as some affront to personal liberty, when in fact, in the history of this country, when the chips are down, when we face an existential threat, Americans bind together, they, share, they engage in shared sacrifice to help each other. And that's what we need to get out of this. We need to get back to that American sense of caring for one another that we seem to have lost. That's a great place for us to end. Thank you very, very much, Drs. Patrice Harris and F. Perry Wilson. I appreciate you both being here and be well. Thank you for all you